you don't see this modification every day. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Check out this cool SG that was listed in Japan. It's got this awesome rose burst finish. You've got matching pickups, a rap tail piece, just a master volume and a master tone with a Bigsby thrown on it. What is this gorgeous thing? Well, it's an SG goddess. We've talked about them on the show. We also have talked about the Les Paul Gaddis. They were offered in some beautiful finishes. And they were introduced at the same time as the Les Paul GT, the goddess being marketed towards women, mainly because the Les Paul one was a little bit smaller, and the GT for the guys. You know, stereotypical tropes. But this one's a little bit different. If you look, that Bigsby was added after the fact because these are stock rap tail pieces. However, you guys know me. I'm not just gonna share something because somebody threw a Bigsby on a semi-rare guitar. Brace yourselves. Look, <laughs> we've had a headstock transplant on this. It's a vintage style flying V with a new gaudy Gibson logo and the original goddess truss rod cover. No, wait, hold the phone. Take a closer look at that. G-I-B-B-O-N-S Gibbons. Now there's actually a real reason behind that. Billy Gibbons has a signature SG with the Flying V headstock. It was initially for the Neiman Marcus run. We talked about it in this episode. They were primarily that kind of green and pink color, but a few custom color ones have recently come out of the Gibson factory. And you gotta remember, at one point in time, these goddesses were blown out rather cheap. So maybe this one didn't even suffer a headstock break and somebody just wanted to get creative and create a tribute to that model. So now I'm curious, how do they do it? Let's look on the back still says made in USA. You can tell the fonts a little bit off. Our serial number is an ink stamped one, D1649. Not quite centered either. To the untrained eye, there's not like an obvious scarf joint or anything. Now obviously there's probably some finish work going on here, but I could see how somebody might think that could be stock. If it said Gibson on the headstock anyway. Now, as far as the story behind it, apparently an online blog called Vintage Maniacs was the one who did these modifications to it. And it's currently sold out, but if I remember correctly, they were asking like 1800 USD, which I think was a lot of fun for what that was, because most people don't do such crazy mods. But speaking of crazy mods, we've been talking about double necks lately, but one of these things showed up. Normally, an EDS-1275 is plastered with pit guards and it's just a solid mahogany guitar. Sometimes they have maple necks, but generally it's the mahogany body. There is a model called the 1275 Supreme, where some sources say they made about 10 of these with flame maple tops. So it has a center seam, except for this is just a giant guitar. So they had to use giant pieces of maple. But in doing that, they had to add additional back plates to this model because they didn't want to cover over the beautiful wood grain. I was really tempted to make an offer on this. However, when I got to the headstock, you've got gold hardware, that's something else that's different. But it's not the version that I saw that had the binding and the custom emblems on it, because that thing was really cool. That particular one also had Super 400 inlays, and it was done up in abalone. <laughs> what a crazy piece. I love that one. But it looks like we also have some blue ones made with nickel hardware. But this one was for sale by Denmark Street Guitars. So I went to their Instagram page and yeah, sure enough, you can see it here sitting in their shop window. You can also see one of their employees playing it right here. Maybe one day we'll get to review one. But I think it'd be a lot of fun to have the double neck as an all maple guitar with the five piece necks as well. <laughs> asking 13,000 when they were initially listed by Landon, the acoustic room guy, they were 10 grand, but that's a model I could see being worth more now. So I wasn't surprised when it didn't even last three days. But next up, a beautiful sun faded beauty. So this is a 1974 Les Paul Custom. It's got a decent weight at nine and a half pounds. Wasn't a bad price, but look at the color. That thing has seen so much sun to fade that much. Originally, it would have looked something similar to this, a really nice rich tobacco sunburst because honeyburst wasn't really a color back then. Now, sure enough, with enough sunlight, you can bleach out the dark parts and get a very unique vibe. That's the thing about guitars like these. You can't really guarantee, even if you took a different one and faded it, that you would get the exact same hue. So it's kind of like a custom color, but you don't have to pay the custom color pricing. I think it'd be a lot of fun to take the pick guard off to see if it's really dark under there. Or if you take the neck pickup ring out, you might be able to see the shadow. But oh, they did give us photos. I wonder if somebody intentionally faded this one. 
I would have thought for sure it'd be much darker under there. It had to have been played Pickguard off for most of its life, but you can kind of see the effect right there. Maybe this one did leave the factory a little bit brighter than usual. Looks like it's been refretted, but that's pretty common for this era of guitars. Still the original bone nut. Got a super yellowed over headstock. And cool, no headstock repairs. And you know what? That actually has some beautiful wood grain, even on the back. But this next one was interesting. It was labeled as a Gibson Explorer E2 1980 one-off custom mint. To which I messaged the seller and I said, um, what makes this a one-off? Because this just looks like nearly every E2 that I've ever seen. And I'd never heard back from him, so I guess he took offense to that. I was just trying to see, is there like more of a story? I'm totally interested. I'm wanting to make an offer. I don't feel it's being advertised properly. So the correct answer as to what makes this one special is it's got the ABR1 bridge. Most E2s do not have that. And it's a perfect center seam, so it's a two-piece top. So I wasn't doubting this guy that this one was special. But here's what scared me away from buying this. The tuners. Looks all right from this photo, but it's this shot that scared me. Do you see what I see? Filled in other tuner holes. So that was part of my next question batch to the seller. Are those under the finish? Because they nearly look like it, which might suggest the whole thing has been refinished, or at least just the headstock. It's hard to tell from photos. And sure enough, if you go to the face of the headstock, you can see the slightly larger washer imprint around them. Or at least that's what I thought I was seeing. But now that I look at it again, maybe that's just the beveled edge but it looks like the pickups are the correct Dirty Fingers set. The case has been replaced with a 90s version, and he was asking 6,500. If it wasn't for the whole tuner situation and the bit of confusion there, I probably would have picked it up for my collection because that is one of the nicest E2s I've seen. Speaking of E2s, here's one that's a little bit cheaper because somebody modified it. <laughs> <laughs> now, at first you might think, what would possess somebody to put that pick guard on it? Here's my guess. Somebody tailored it at one point in time, and instead of properly filling it in with wood and then still being able to see the outline, they thought, why don't we just put one of them weirdy zigzag pick guards on there? Because it's going to cover it up and still look decent. And at the same time, they threw the double cream pickups in there. And the E2 is just a cool model in general with the additional contours and the multi-layered bodies of walnut and maple. Same thing is true on the necks. This one's got a little bit of a wing separation. Not too big of a deal. But cool, first year 1979. A lot of people don't realize those actually came out in the late 70s. They're primarily associated as an 80s guitar. This one also caught my attention as a 2002 ES-135. I generally don't do a lot of guitars like these on the show, but this one, look at all the wood grain and a little bit of flame. It's got some age to it with the worn in gold hardware. I thought about making an offer on this one just to document such a fantastic example of a ES-135, and then we could have learned a little bit more about it. Now, unfortunately, I never made that offer, so I figure since it's sold, might as well share it with everybody now, because even the back, I would say, is just as gorgeous, if not even more so. And it's got some general light wear and tear, but look at that. Even a three-piece maple neck on that, with some decent flameage on the side. And it's got that shortly-lived Made in Memphis on the back of the headstock. I thought that was a very reasonable 1800 because there's way less attractive versions for sale right now for a lot more. But speaking of attractive versions, we've documented the Music Zoo exclusive single humbucker Les Paul, but look at the top on this one. Definitely one of the heavier flamed versions that they've stocked, but they seem to get a couple of these in every year. They're a lot of fun. They might look strange and non-traditional, but trust me, there's something to a full-bodied Les Paul with the carved top that only has one pickup. And we've got one more for you tonight. A made-to-measure 63-spec Firebird 1. It was listed at 5000 bucks. I thought it had really cool wood grain for a custom shop bird. Like, if you're going to get a Firebird 1, it might as well be a little bit extra in some way. And in this one, it's got the whole ribbon flame mahogany stuff going on. That gives me an idea. I would love to see the elements of the E2, the walnut and maple, in Firebird format. Because you got to remember, these necks traditionally are nine pieces. So you could have, like, the main maple parts and then the walnuts in between then make the maple figured. I'd like to see Gibson do more with multi-layered woods. I just love guitars like that. Now you can go too far like the Zoot Suit series and scare a lot of people. What was the average? Like 48 pieces when we counted them in those reviews? <laughs> but like just a couple of sandwiches of wood like the M3 Deluxe is a nice touch.
All right, Chocolateites, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.